And I've got a capo on, so I can't actually do the next part. I see now. Hi. <laughs> but yeah, so what are the topics for today? <laughs> well, apart, apart from the solo that I'm loving right now. It's pretty good, right? I'm a terrible uh, guitar player. Live with State of CS number six with Vendetta. Twitch.tv forward slash room on fire. Oh, the social. All oh, the social. <laughs> live with State of CS number everywhere. six. Uh, well, hold on. That's like the Mountain Dew League or something. Oh, there we go. We've updated. We Gucci. We Gucci. I like these starts, you know? There's nice. no, like, wait screen or anything. It's just straight, straight, in. straight in. And so we had a little bit of a solo from Ven to start us off. I thought that was pretty good. And, uh, and now we're going to get into it. Welcome, everybody. State of CS, episode six. My name is Semler, and with me is Vendetta and Ven. How, well, I mean, we'll, st we'll get into the topics. We'll get into the topics, but first I want to ask, you know, how you doing? Everything good, man? I'm doing all right. Uh, tiny bit sleep deprived, so nothing new. No, uh, that's, that's pretty usual for you. Yeah, pretty usual. Uh, other than that, doing swell. Yeah. Uh, and you're usually the one who's like, well, okay, hold on. How's, how, it's like, what game have you been playing the most of lately? We'll put it that uh, way. I, th I think you know which one. <laughs> <laughs> You know that the, because you've been playing it as well. You know that the patch is coming out today, dude. It's already out. I've already done world, world bosses. Get out. No, no. Like this is the problem with my fucked up schedule, right? So I'm, I'm there. I'm ready. Like when rolling restarts happen on the servers, I'm just like, God damn it, this is downtime. Like you know, that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> dude, that's what's killing me. I mean, it's just I don't have much time to play, right? True. And. um and like I'm doing all the prep for Overwatch. I'm doing the prep for New York. I'm like doing stuff for Room on Fire. And then I'm like watching in the, on my second monitor. I'm watching like Lyric Raid or something. I'm like, motherfucker, <laughs> son of a bitch. At least I'm getting to like watch it through Lyric's eyes. But it's true, but you don't get to have all the fun yourself. No, that's that's the big issue, right? I know that's the thing, man. That's the thing. It's like this the eternal struggle. Yeah, but you know what? Like, what's sick? Hello, everybody. And in case you're wondering what the hell we're talking about, we're on a segue already. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about WoW and the, uh, the, the raid patch that just came out right now. So or it's Emerald like, Night, isn't it? Emerald Nightmare or something like that. I yeah. Mean, uh, I mean, dude, it's pretty good. It's pretty dude, good. So far, this expansion has already been like 10 times better than Drainer. Than, uh, than Drainer. all expansions? Well, I mean, it's been a while since I've actually enjoyed it this much. Like Wrath maybe was the last time that it was. Yeah, there. Wrath was really fucking sick though. Yeah. Like I really enjoy that. I hope there's like a old war kind of raid. Yeah, I and, think. And this, in this expansion that would be so sick. I loved old war. Man, I like that's like a stroll down memory lane, you know, because oh, yeah. like Wrath was. Uh, I used to, I didn't even have a PC that could run well back then, and so Shit. I was literally going to the land cafe every day after work. So I'd, I'd show up early to work so that I could leave an hour early so that I could hit raid time because most of the guild were on the East Coast. Damn. So, <laughs> That's like, dedication. Dude, it was good. It was good. Oh, man. And then, uh, yeah, and then, be, and then I discovered the, the glory of BLC and uh, basically gave up on WoW and started playing Bloodline <laughs> Champions 24 hours a day as much as I could. I mean, I, I it, guess yeah. you could say it worked out in the end, right? Well, because no. BLC I could play on my laptop. Like, and, that was the thing. I, mean, I couldn't play WoW on my laptop, but I could play BLC on my laptop. True, and WoW probably wouldn't have brought you to Sweden. BLC did. Right? BLC definitely did, yeah. So without, you know, I guess BLC fucking up your WoW dreams, I guess, and your your raid progress, there wouldn't be any similar today. This is basically it, yeah, man. Yeah. Because, I mean, I spent what, like... Because that was, that was one of my all-time favorite jobs that I've had was running this coffee shop. 
And that whole coffee shop, man, was literally just full of like students and young, like working people. And yeah. the whole place was just wow people. And so literally you'd walk through this coffee shop and it would just be like every table was having a different discussion about some topic and wow. Like whether it be PVP, rating, min-maxing, whatever. And so you could literally just bounce from table to table and just like, oh yeah. You, somebody says like, oh man, a Rothy base in this. And you just be like, fuck that shit. And then you get in there and like start having, you know, get, so get into these like crazy wow conversations. So you were basically doing theory crafting at work. Yeah. So like, dude, that was my, like that job was the shit. Jesus. Because it would be either, yeah, like discussions on on like books and you know movies and shit like that because it was a bunch of it was just a bunch of video files and stuff coming in you know who were watching yeah. shit on their laptop drinking their coffee uh, i mean this was the last coffee shop that actually had uh, that you could smoke in indoors uh, right okay yeah and in los angeles right in the greater la area and so everybody like if, if you like to have your coffee and you enjoyed your cigarettes you were at that coffee shop right and so it was just all sorts of people who were up at all hours of the night and a lot of them were gamers and so yeah Nonstop! Wow, talk. I kind of miss that, man. You know, because that's like you don't really. Did you, like, did you, you got, go back there though? Like, yeah, I went back. Coffee shop. Yeah, and it's totally different now. Oh, uh, they fucked it up. They completely fucked it up. Basically, one of the old, and this this is what really did my head in is like it was one of the OG people that I remember from way back who used to be a regular there who yeah. then who went off, did some other stuff, came back, bought it, bought the coffee shop from the old owner who didn't want to run it anymore because that guy was he had a full time job. And, uh, and then he tried to turn it in, like, the beauty of that coffee shop is that it didn't make money, but it didn't cost money either. And so yeah. it just existed. And so the whole point of owning it was just like, it was just self-perpetuating, you know, it just continued yeah. to run. Um, and this guy tried to turn it into something that would make money and just completely killed the soul of the place. Like, the, no, yeah. none of the old people go there anymore. None of the, it was just, just, just totally different. Does he make money though? I don't even know if he makes money. Uh, you know, that's the thing. He might have he might have killed the soul of this place. Might have fucked it up badly. That's exactly. Still not made money. All right. uh, it's goddamn crying shame. That's how it is. Make you know, money. New entrepreneurs, right? Dude, it's all it's that's right, Funky Love. Entrepreneurs, I know, right? It's all about making skrill. We should get Thorin on here. You know, you can talk to talk to Dude, him about uh, Yeah, money. I I did a podcast with Duncan yesterday. Get out. Yeah, no, we got on the topic of Skrilla. Obviously. Obviously. Yeah, I think it was Jason who brought it up, actually. Oh, wait, hold on. Was it by the numbers that you did? Counterpoints. It was counterpoints. Okay. Yeah. So, I think it's coming out today some sometime. Oh, sick. Yeah. All right. Yeah, dude, that's always the best. It's like the best like to have on like podcast format, and you just kind of like you leave it on, and you're listening, yeah. and you know, you're getting ready or whatever, right, and you've got that going. Like that's the that's the shit right there. Sick, dude. I'm glad to hear that. The, all right, cool. So that's gonna be coming out tomorrow or today. Uh, yeah, like one of these days. Whenever Duncan feels like it. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. All right, cool. So guys, be sure to tune into that. It's uh, what? What's his YouTube again? Thorin with three O's, I think. Yeah, that sounds about right. So YouTube, search for Thorin with three O's, and um, check out the vod there. All right, what do we want to talk about though? I think that's the question because we've gone down like memory lane for a little bit. It's fun. I mean, I do enjoy it. <laughs> But uh, we actually need to talk about some CS and there's, it feels like there is a kind of like a, I don't know, a variety of things to talk there's about. A, I mean, what did you guys cover last time uh, with the Inco during the state of CS? Oh, because that was just like, it's only last week, right? So well, last Yanko was like the week before. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Last then week you was understand. Anders and I, I think we just covered, you know, like thoughts on star series. Did you guys do E Week like uh, the the preliminary stuff? Had that happened? No, at that, that point? I think that was like ongoing at that point last week, wasn't it? It could be. Yeah. You had E League and you had Star Series going at the same time, which made it really awkward to to yeah. watch basically because you're obviously going to watch Star Series, and rather than watch like it was really weird how they did that because basically like what it's like, I don't think the teams were in the studio and you had teams that were playing Star Series and then try and then playing from Star Series in E League. I don't know how the hell that worked. Yeah, like uh, like you have so many qualifiers. I feel like I've <laughs> except that this is like the preseason, basically. Yeah, so they haven't done like the prelim stuff that they did for NA. They haven't done for EU yet, right? The preliminary rounds, or have is they? that supposed to start now? No, 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 no. Yeah, no. Actually, yeah, they have done the prelim. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's what they were doing during Starladder. Yeah, E League season two was during Starladder. That was uh, yeah. EU, and then NA came the week afterwards, going into Bucharest. 
Yeah. And so you had some teams there for North America. That's also why, like Thor and Moses, they were over in Atlanta. Uh, this week, there's nothing going on E League related. And then next week, obviously, is E League Overwatch. Um, the Overwatch tournament going into ESL New York, basically. That's the that's the yeah. next big thing I think that's going to break because there, I don't think there's anything this weekend as far as like LAN tournaments are concerned. I think everybody's focusing on New York for the end of the month. Mm. So, I mean, Sounds we could right. talk about New York if we want because oh, it is sure. definitely yeah. looking like pretty goddamn like Arnold Schwarzenegger stacked, you know? Oh, um, dude, it's going to be good. I mean, you're gonna, you guys are going. It's going to be in the fucking Barclays Center. Yeah. and That's so baller. What's bizarre as well, I mean, actually, what's the format? was already been revealed. I mean, they're doing the Swiss format for the groups. Which is good. We like that. We like Swiss format. Yeah. Definitely. And if you're not familiar with how Swiss format works, you need to win three maps to move on to the uh, playoffs. And if you lose three maps, you're out. And so you're basically always playing against other teams that have the same scoreline as you. So it just like slowly weeds everybody out. Um, yeah. You know, you, you, and you give three. plenty of chances to, to fuck up. Basically. Still make yeah. it back. Well, I mean, like yeah. you like I, I mean, you, you've always got New York coming up right now. And um, what's fun is uh, the tournament i mean basically what wasn't that the the recent announcement made by wessa or something that it was the players that settled on a format for a tournament was it going to be oakland or was it going to be pro league i think it was going to be the pro league finals yeah it could be pro league finals because i don't think we've heard anything about oakland yet yeah or at least not at least not officially we, no you're right it wasn't stuff, oakland no, it was the pro league finals is, yeah Okay, we can talk about New York first, and then we can move on to the Pro League Finals, because Pro League is obviously going to be coming a bit later. But, I mean, I just I just kind of get a giggle out of uh, the the uh, out of the whole uh, player union deciding on a format, which is basically like they like ESL tried to make it sound new, like, oh, this is a new format. And I'm like, it's just the Katowice format. Like, yeah, that's literally kind of what they decided on. They're playing a round-robin group stage. You get first seed. You get your buy into the semis. And I think everyone was kind of... You know, everyone had kind of figured out after the Katowice qualifier, like, oh, yeah, this is how it should be in the future anyway. Seemed like all the teams enjoyed it, and, like, the viewers joined it. You got a ton of good games from it. I think it's so just going to place a big demand on how they're going to set up the infrastructure for the event because you need a lot of PCs to run it that way, right, the round-robin format. You don't want people yeah, switching true. in and out all the time. It's going to be eight teams, right? Uh, yeah, isn't it? So you need 40 PCs plus a couple for coaches. If they're No, wait. Is the coach rule is going to be in place for ESL New York? Well, aren't ESL already adopting the coach rules? Like right off Yeah, the but they're still allowed in Pro League online games, aren't they? I'm pretty sure, yeah. So I, mean, I don't teams, know. It's I, up to I, the teams, I think. Like, I think Navi are still running Starks as the shot caller. I mean, they just announced that yeah. Seized is, but I think he's more like he's in training until... There's actually something like is the young pod one right now, dude. This is the weird thing with this whole um, scenario is that you know the players made a lot of noise about having some kind of follow up conversation with Valve. I guess because we haven't heard anything since that Valve basically said, yeah, uh, you know our rule stands, yeah. or something positive, you know, for the players didn't come out of that conversation because what it's it's like or, totally or the dark. conversation just never took place, or it just never took which, place. Well, yeah, yeah, which wouldn't surprise me at all. I you know there's there's there is a player Skype. I don't know if we can call well, it a union. There, there's a sp- there's a player Skype chat. Super organized, I've heard. I yeah exactly right. So I mean you know they 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 probably you know typed a lot in like all caps. And, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, Somebody hit the, like the the video conference call button. Invited like 126 people into the same call. <laughs> <laughs> Just beautiful. I think one guy tried to mediate everything. I feel like, you know, this is going back to ancient Athens or something where, you know, it's like 500 and, what was it, 501 yeah. people in the council ready to listen to your thoughts. Go. I mean, that's pretty much what they do in UK still, right? Parliament? Parliament, yeah. House yeah, Parliament it's just a there. clusterfuck. Everybody's shouting at each other. <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's fun because I think it's like Australia that that releases the the vods as well of uh, of those meetings, and it's like one person standing in the middle trying to speak, and then it's just rows of people sitting around them shouting at him. It's like like they actually sounds start like a good throwing time. shit too. Like it's it it goes completely primal at times there, like especially like during the Brexit talks, like people are throwing papers and shit. It was absolutely nuts. <laughs> I I I, I kind of want that to happen for CS though, except that like none of the players are that excitable. Like most of the players would just be like, "Meh, okay." 
and then that would be like the extent well, yeah, of their I wonder frustration. if you had to have like one like or a couple of really outspoken guys who just like fly off the handle for certain topics. Who would that be for us? Who would that be for CS? It yeah, wouldn't be any I'm of the Swedes. Thinking, no, for sure not. Uh, I'm thinking uh, or the maybe Danes. one of the NA teams, maybe. But then again, no, nobody from Cloud9. Nobody from Cloud9. I mean, maybe nothing, but no. Yeah, no, I, I think you'd go about it in a mild manner. No, nothing would most definitely go about it in a mild I manner. I guess you'd probably like Pearl. put the hand on the shoulder, like the back, you know, your shoulder blade, and just be like, you know, let, let's talk it out. <laughs> exactly. Know? Like that would be nothing style. I can uh, see Taz getting loud about stuff. Yeah. Okay. I could get yeah. behind Taz. I could definitely I get behind Taz yeah. riling things up. Then maybe like a French player, but even the French players, not so much. I mean. Yeah, no, I, I think they, well, maybe MVK would definitely be outspoken, but I think he'd be diplomatic in, in his presentation. He's usually the outspoken one for the French scene anyways. Yeah. He'll come on the talk shows. He'll actually know. have the discussions. I think yeah, I think was, it's uh, down to the to the Eastern European teams here to bring the fire. It's like so, if you send it simple there. <laughs> if we send know. simple there, yeah, I think that he like I don't know if that would be constructive though. It's not usually <laughs> a good both. idea to like throw things at the guy we're, who's talking. I mean, we're there for the for the clash, right? We're there for the for the spectacle of it. I mean, didn't Guardian used to rage to the point where he'd like hit people with his mouse or something as well? I mean. I think a lot of people have done that through through the years. I mean, <laughs> like I, I still remember Cajun after like going out at a dangerous land uh, in CSS, just yeah. immediately flipped out and tried to sell his PC on the spot, like right after they tapped out. <laughs> just like ready, right. was like selling his monitor, selling his PC. It's like it's over, it's done. That's right. That's right. All right so Cajun yeah. definitely out of the Danish crew, he could definitely speak up. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, uh, I'm just trying to picture this round table right now. I mean, if we give them a couple of drinks, I think Apex can be, get pretty loud as well. It, it becomes a lot more interesting if you, you know, introduce alcohol to the picture. I, that's what I was saying, except that Taz is going to start crying. Uh, He's just going to say that it's all unfair. Um, true. So that's not going to really achieve anything. Well, I mean, um, I'm, I'm not looking for progress in any sense. I'm just looking for entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> just want to see the world burn. Exactly, right? At this point... I, I don't even. I don't even. I right, hold on. We're yeah. we're all over the place here now, man. Like, all right. So ESL right, New York, bringing it back. Bringing ESL it back. One New York, pretty yeah. stacked tournament, honestly. But yeah. last team hasn't been announced yet, has it? No, they're apparently they're still. Um, or at least HLTV released it a couple days ago or yesterday, I think. Um, yeah, they're still like SK go up against the North American qualifier winner. Okay, yeah, so the matchup's settled for the first round. Yeah, 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 I can see it now. It's VP, Fnatic, G2, Astralis, SK versus whoever wins the NA qualifier, and then Navi versus Liquid. So let's see. I mean, I have the link now for the qualifier, so we could try and speculate on who's going to make it, and that's right. That's right. This is the ma this is the tournament that Optic beat Immortals in. Yeah, exactly. So Immortals like are out two days ago or something yeah that was yeah when the internet flipped its shit and was starting to actually get worried about the mortals i guess i don't know like or just like what the hell happened with optic and how the hell did they actually beat immortals might be uh might be the more accurate way to yeah. look at it tsm took out echo fox and we're still waiting on cloud nine and clg to play but i imagine cloud nine are kind of shit they're just gonna stomp their way through that one they yeah. should stomp their way through tsm I mean, uh, yeah it should be a cloud nine optic finals and at that point <clears throat> Uh, like obviously, I'm gonna favor Cloud9 to take that, but I don't know. I feel like Optic is one of those NA teams that can just go off for a best of threes and just you know beat any of the NA teams as of right now. All right, so I mean, the top half of the bracket is yet to be played out, basically. So Cloud9 yeah. versus CLG, TSM beat Echo Fox. So TSM are waiting for whoever wins Cloud9 CLG, and then you'll have that match to decide who goes on to face off against Optic. And then I imagine it'll be a best of three, basically, to sort out who's going to be that last team. So ideal world, we're looking at Cloud9 versus Optic, and then one of those guys going up against SK. What a lovely gift. That's, uh, yeah, SK on LAN as well. Because, I mean, sure, SK have been a little shaky lately online. but um, They've been playing with a stand and everything. They haven't had yeah. that much time to get for back into, into the groove of things, have they? Well, they'll have a he's, week, he's been back right? at, like, what? Yeah, he, well, he's been back for a week, roughly, right? I, yeah, I that sounds feel like right. I saw Fallen tweeting about meeting for at the airport or something. I mean, 
they have like a week basically to boot camp. Yeah. Like monsters. Well, they're they're definitely gonna do that. They're gonna spend their time wisely. What do I like about this is that. Games? What's up? Do they have a lot of pro league games in the meantime, or are they actually gonna get like effective practice time? No, I don't know, man. Hold on, I see SK playing against Sofa King. Good. Okay. And that is in the ECS Season 2 NA Development League, whatever the fuck that is. Yeah, and they're playing Echo Fox and EPL after. What is this? NA Development League. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, like the like the Premier 2 ECS Premier, uh, like Elite Division, I guess if you want to call it that. Right, where you can either rank up or, or get Just screwed. Just stay put, pretty yeah, much. exactly. Okay, so Immortals, Renegades are both playing in the NA. Renegade's kind of teetering and SK 3-0 so far. Okay, so, I mean, they're going to be playing that. I mean, I wouldn't exactly call that the best practice. No, definitely not. But I don't think it's going to take away too much from their practice time either. I think that's, like, when they're going up against SKG, it's going to be like, okay, guys, we've, we've got a game. And then they just hop in, play, disconnect, done, then go back to practicing. Because <laughs> like, they're not going to prepare for SKG, like, let's be honest. Uh, probably not. I can, yeah. I could have, a, I mean, the thing is like, yeah, you could, you could prep by, I mean, one thing that you could do that could be interesting if you're SK is you could run a bunch of shit that yeah, like uh, you don't want to, stuff. exactly. You don't want to yeah. run against people who are actually going to be at New York. So, I mean, that could be one thing, except that it's going to be like official games. So it's not scrims. So, yeah. you know, like VP could go and find those VODs or something like that. I don't know. That's a, that's a little awkward. Yeah. Yeah, no, but I mean, if I'm SK, I would rather do it versus, you know, a lower tier opponent than let's say you're playing Cloud9 or, or Liquid in EPL. Yeah. I, instead of busting it out there, because that's, you know, a very, uh, you know, obvious game for VP to look at, for instance. That's fair. So if you want to do it, do it against scrub teams that you're, you know, you have kind of the, the room to, to fuck up with. So if your you know, new strats don't work because you haven't practiced them well enough, it's not, you know, it hasn't been dry run uh enough times then you know it's not the end of the world but if you do that versus a team that can legitimately punish you for it multiple rounds in a row then you know you're starting to look at an issue mm -hmm. and i think sk got off to such a rough start in epl as well that they don't they can't really afford to lose all that much more if they want to get to sao paulo because they started off the season terribly yeah like they're eight and four right now so they're in they're yeah they're in sixth so they're yeah, barely ahead of Optic Gaming, but they got a couple of matches to uh, to spare there. Yeesh. Yeah, you're right. So, yeah, you don't want to like mess about in in the in EPL at least. That was Liquid as well, who had a really rough start. Kind of expect to see them a bit higher up there, but yeah, that's uh, dude. Imagine a world where it's just like somehow um, Liquid and SK don't make it. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. It would be weird if like Immortals is the Brazilian representative at it, uh, like a finally a big LAN in Brazil and I mean, not SK. Yeah, that that pretty like catastrophe comes to mind. I think is like the, <laughs> the key word there. This is a nice way of putting it, but uh, I, I expect SK to kind of clean up the rest of the season. Uh, I think they they still have Cloud Nine to go, uh, but other than that, they've already played Team Liquid, so they don't have to worry about them. Mm -hmm. They got like Echo Fox, E, e United, Splice, and Selfless. I think maybe Optic as well, which should be doable for them. Have they played Cloud Nine yet? No, that's like yeah, the one. Haven't. That's like the one. Well, they've got Immortals left too, actually. So that those two games are probably going to decide their fate. Oh, Cloud Nine's been ugly. tearing it up. Like I think Cloud Nine just. Like yesterday or something, dropped their first map. Maybe yeah, they're seventeen, 17 and one. one right now. Yeah, which dropped is it nuts. To yeah, yeah. They dropped it to Echo Fox. Echo Fox has actually been doing pretty well in EPL so far. They've been doing all right for themselves. Yeah, which is, uh, I mean, like Sean seems to be fairly pleased so far. <laughs> fairly. Well, I mean, he's the kind of guy who's always looking for improvements, right? Yeah. So he's never going to be fully satisfied. I think what's interesting is Renegades are also doing pretty pretty good right now. That's got to be uh, one of those feel good things for Sponge at least. Oh, sorry yeah. for Chad. Doesn't want us yeah. to call him Sponge anymore. Damn, sorry, well, still gonna do it. Sorry, Sponge. <laughs> that's that's your name. 
Yeah. Except I mean, you know, yeah, exactly. You stuck with it. It's going to be with them forever. What you have uh, done to yourself. <laughs> Renegades have actually gotten, you know, they've played versus most of the strong teams in EPL so far. Like, mm-hmm. they lost in overtime to Cloud9. They lost pretty heavily versus Immortals, but they beat Liquid. They got a default win over... No, 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 not a default win, what am I saying? But I guess, you know, the infamous Cold Zero Showtime stuff happened when they played SK. That's right. So they've got a pretty doable route to close out the season. So I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all if Renegades end up being amongst the qualifiers with where they're at right now. Like, I don't see... Yeah, it's going to have to be, like, a miracle run from Liquid or Optic to kind of bump them out while SK keeps performing and everything. Hmm. Should be interesting to see how that closes out. I mean, it's just such a long process. Fucking 18 games that Cloud9 have had to play. Yeah. It's like, all right. I mean, they've gotten over... I guess they've done... In a sense, they've done it, you know, well... Because, you know, they've played pretty much all their games in EPL so far, which is going to allow them to have a more lenient schedule going forward. Mm-hmm. And they've done so with success as well. So, I mean, I mean, for the well, I, I think they're probably guaranteed a spot right now, aren't they? I would be surprised if they weren't. They got like, yeah, they've got 51 points. I, I don't think there's any chance in hell that they're not going to make it to the playoffs because they've got, what, four games left? What, Cloud9? Yeah, I highly doubt it. Yeah, yeah. So Cloud9 is already a lock. So they can already start going, you know, not necessarily easy, but... They can definitely know, stress a little less. Part. Yeah, exactly. So they can focus on other stuff. So with them going to tournaments in, in Europe and everything right now, they can focus more on that, which should be good for them and, and not have to stress out about having to qualify for this because, you know, they've already locked that down early on. While the other teams have, you know, fumbled about at the beginning, they... They definitely need to get their shit sorted. Well, I mean, the th- like, sh- it must mean it must mean that Cloud Nine. Hold on, let's see. Can we check at least like today? North American matches. North American matches. Give me Cloud Nine CLG, please. Nope, I don't see it. Because the like this is gonna get a little tricky. I mean, it looks like CLG have a bunch of pro league games tonight, but um, yeah. I mean, uh, New York is next weekend, so. You still, you're still waiting on your North American qualifying team, right? And, uh, you know, if you're Jack right now, the owner of Cloud9, you're just kind of like, eh. Although, I don't think that, I mean, the, pro- like the players, are, the teams are probably getting travel support. So, actually, it's probably ESL who are just like, please play your game so we can book your tickets. <laughs> true. This, these are flights to New York, which are never cheap. It's very true. Uh, Even though you're inside the country, but cloud Nine's based in Los Angeles, aren't they? Yeah, like, what, Santa Monica or something? So, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, they're... They're on the other side. That's a six-hour flight. I remember making that flight and not enjoying <laughs> it. That was that was it's actually pretty nuts. Getting from LA to to New York is nearly the same travel time as getting from Oslo to to New York. Yeah, Oslo to New York, London to New York. Like, yeah, um, I'm super excited. Well, it's Dude, more like whenever I can get uh, like that's the that's the nice thing about E League is that you're you're on you're still on the East Coast. Even if you are a little further south, I mean, it's still like you're in single digit flight time instead of getting into the double digit nightmare of, oh, yeah, fly to Los Angeles. <laughs> like 11 hours. 11 hours later. How fun. <laughs> instead of, you know, like the eight and a half hour, nine hour flight that you get from Atlanta. So, I mean, yeah, definitely makes a difference. For sure. It's, it's nuts how big a difference. Like, if you're in single digits, you're still feeling good. It's like the double digits of flying out all the way. Uh, no, kill yourself. Oh, dude, like the, the flight we had to Taipei. Yeah, 14 Holy hours shit, get wrecked. That, that utterly fucked me. Holy shit. Like, I felt <laughs> great the first day when we landed. I was like, all right, I can deal with this. Not feeling any jet lag. I, like, oh, when the night set in, I was just utterly wrecked. Holy hell. I did not deal well with that. <laughs> I mean, Boogie Bagels, you're right. You're absolutely right, right? You have to consider windage and flying against the Earth's rotation and all that jazz, right? So obviously Science. it makes for a shorter flight, you know. Shorter Science. flight one way. That was, uh, wait, what wasn't that? But like going to Taipei was, was like a 10, 11 hour flight. And then coming back was like the 13 hour madness flight or something like that. I can't remember. It was uh, 
I was rough both ways. And I'll especially be because you have to fly around China. Like you can't just fly straight over, which would yeah. be very handy and nice. Instead, we're going all the way around. It's like, come on. Uh, I, I remember see. actually uh, like one of the star ladders I went to when all the Crimea stuff was going on uh, at its worst. The flight route was extended by like an hour or so because you had to go around Russia like by a fair margin to getting to to get to Kiev. No, thank you. Yeah, no, that was uh, that was interesting. And a propeller flight, of course. That was oh, there's the, always the, a good time. Uh, so to close out on New York, I mean, for a team that caught a bit of a tough break, Fnatic also not really not really digging their matchup there to start versus VP. That's gonna yeah. Be, uh, that's gonna be a bit of a tough one for Olaf and the boys. Assuming VP shows up like the Bucharest VP and not the Star Letter VP. Ah, yeah. but, I mean, again, like this is, you never really know with VP, do you? Especially because, yeah, they just won a tournament. And so they're probably, they might all be just, you know, Pasha's just sitting there curling, curling iron, you know. <laughs> Resting right. on their laurels. You know, exactly. I'm, I'm, I, I might be a little worried about the back to back performance from VP. Or maybe, yeah. I mean, it's always possible, obviously, but it might just go down a few points. Yeah, I, I think for like uh, Fnatic, the for them they can only go up from where they started. Yeah, in many ways. they're what like twenty eighth ranked or something on HLTV right now. Yeah, no, yeah, they pretty much just got erased from the rankings because because of their lineup changes. Get but <laughs> yeah, definitely, it shouldn't take them too long to get back into things though. Even though the, the I I wouldn't say the lineup today is you know anywhere near the the old old one, but. No, they can only go up from here. So, and I think for VP, there's much more of a fall height, just coming off a of win at Bucharest and everything. But you know, they VP do well in stadium events usually, so should be a good matchup. And then we go down to G two versus Astralis. I fear for Astralis. Holy hell! Yeah, what are your thoughts on them right now? Because every time I talk with Anders, it just feels like he wants to cut himself. So, I mean, like, what do you what do you? Think? <laughs> yeah, he wants to cut himself, and then he goes like, "But don't worry, they'll win the next major." Yeah, yeah, he's the 100%. one. Was he, like, he was writing it out, tweeting it in Leet Speak as <laughs> Astralis and shit. Like, uh, I, I don't know. I think they've gotten to. Him. I think they've broken Anders completely at this point. Like, he's in just just in this delusional state where everything's fine, so good got a backup plan like this is the you know the big scheme they've made everyone you know lose hope now they're going to strike come back with a you know vengeance well i mean they have to give it to astralis at least they did qualify so they went through and, the qualifiers to get that spot and to get through that qualifier they actually played really well yeah they had to beat uh, dignitas that's never easy for astralis they had to beat yeah. envious again not super easy to do when you're astralis and they just kind of stomped on FaZe as well. Which is Who, definitely interesting. And FaZe, that, and FaZe was playing really well. Like They had that stretch uh, of online games where they were playing super well. So they started off by beating Godsent in that qualifier yeah. and then beat Mouseports 2-0 yep. as well. And in the meantime, that's when they're starting to get back into things in EPL as well. So yeah, th that was definitely like a uplifting performance from, from Astralis. But then you know they come back and, and don't do too well at Star Ladder. So uh, I don't know. I don't feel too hot with Astralis going into that, like because every time we talk to them, it's the same same story all over again. It's like, yeah, yeah, we're you know going through a rough patch, but you know we're working on it. We're gonna come through shining. Yeah. And it just never seems to find and they never seem to find a, like a good answer. And right now, I think it's more down to the fact that just individual players on the team aren't really playing as well as they have done in the past. I think Dupree has been very on and off as of late, which is obviously like. a big thing for Astralis because he's uh, you know their entry fragger so you lose a lot of momentum going into that T sides become way way harder and I think it also like weighs down on you know the players themselves Dupree is the kind of guy who gets really down on himself he feels like he's not performing up to the level he holds himself to yeah that's true I mean at the wasn't it at the beginning of the year that um, certain stats came out that Astralis basically live or die off of, Div off of Dupree. If he's like positive or even rating, then they win. If he's negative rating, they lose basically. Yeah, so. pretty much. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, yeah. Except for like the outlier game where device just goes God mode. Yeah. Like that's, uh, that's, um, that's, I mean, that's a lot of weight to have, especially if you're like the entry yeah. fighter, right? Because it's not an easy role, super oh, no. difficult to maintain a high level in that role. 
and yeah. and then yeah and then your whole team is just like hey i hope you don't <laughs> mind but we're all gonna pile on your back here for a second yeah you know, like leg day. He, he's like one of those uh what do they call them the guys who uh ah oh, when you go up mount everest you have these uh sherpas. oh the sherpas yeah yeah Dupree's like the Sherpa of Astralis. <laughs> so the carries the you know, carries all the bags, everything, like up the mountain, and then, you know, the guys who are, you know, basically just straddled up the mountain, they take, you know, the selfie at the top and then they go down. <laughs> the poor Sherpa gets no credit. He's got a bit of like uh well, I mean, for some reason, yes, obviously Sherpa's men, you know, who do that. But for some reason I I, I almost picture him as like a, a pack yak. Or like, yeah, you know, with that hair, and I was just, oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I could, I, you know, he's got that shock. I could totally see him as a pack yak, you know, just just walking up the hill. I mean, when he gets into his game, he looks unstoppable, right? Yak yeah, yeah. is pretty big. If you if you're in the way of a yak, most likely you're getting out of its way. So, yeah. I could see, I could see where this works. I could see where this was working. Okay, exactly. Maybe. So I think yeah, if a well, are going to have any success at New York, I think it's going to be. It's gonna have to be Dupree coming back to back to form and yeah. you know forming that deadly duo of the double D's. Dude, I know. I miss those times. It's uh, I, yeah, it feels like it's been a very long time since Cologne. For some reason, I always think of back to Cologne, two thousand what fifteen, where yeah, right. device like I felt like that was their time, and then Device's mouse got crushed, and he had to play with a different mouse that pretty much cost them the semis. I mean, I don't know. So it's such yeah. a close game. And then, uh, yeah. They really haven't had fortune on their side a lot of the times. No. But then again, they are their, their own worst enemy in a lot of these situations. Well, that was the thing, right? Where I was yeah. always, um, in particular, that, that sort of scenario, that, that was where I became started to get really outspoken with the players where I was just like, please use peripherals that can be replaced easily or bring an extra one with you. So I mean, that, if they're sponsored, like, if, if you're sponsored by a company, just be like, Give us five of everything. But that's what you would think. But then some of the, some of the players are even going so far as to use like test mice and shit that hasn't even been released yet. You yeah, know? And I'm like, not, why are you doing madness. that to yourself? That's complete madness. Yeah, exactly. If something goes wrong with that, and you've spent the last month playing with it, and you know, and all all either you lose it, it breaks, whatever, you're screwed. Yeah. It's, like even even if you have to revert back to your, your I guess your old mouse, mm -hmm. uh, the one you you been used to for like let's say a year or so it's still gonna feel weird like that's a transition period like at least well i, I guess some some players don't care too much about peripherals but at least i know in my own case that if i don't get the right mouse i'm, I'm just completely out of it it it's, just feels wrong it's like players like top gun though like top gun actually top gun yeah top, top gun yeah, top gun um like it was at the asia minor dude at taipei remember yeah, where yeah. he was using like a 10 year old intelli mouse or something like that yeah, like the one one or something. And, and it, like he's like, oh yeah, this is what I've been using since like the days of CGS or something. I was just like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, I, I don't understand how that doesn't break. Because I exactly, I've, I've used like uh, the Logitech series of MX five tens, five eighteens, G four hundred, G four hundred S, and I've had probably about like thirty five of them or something, and they always break. And well, you like, also rage, like you also get. Pre I mean, well then true, again, but Top Gun's a big I, guy. If he were to slam his mouse <laughs> around, I imagine. Well, they would get smashed into pieces. But like, uh, like when I rage, it's more like it goes on my keyboard. Like that, that's <laughs> where all the anger gets released. So Do my you have mouse, spare switches. You know, uh, well, and if, weirdly enough, like the keyboard I have right now hasn't, you know, taken a dent yet. I guess that says more about my strength than anything else. But <laughs> you know, it's, it's, a, it's a sturdy keyboard, right? I was gonna go on the angle, like, oh, it's brand new, unboxed. It hasn't had the joy yet of getting punched. <laughs> but you know. Uh, this has seen some hard times, for sure. <laughs> my my table as well. Ah, uh, yeah, dude. Like, like, uh, uh, yeah. No, I ha like I have this uh, like shelf under uh, under the table, uh -huh. uh, which is like, you know, it's not wood all the way through. Like the the bottom part of it is just like some cardboard kind of deal okay. that has multiple holes in it. That's for my knee just going right through it. <laughs> <laughs> The but it like, don't get me wrong i mean but yeah these like it's funny because you don't really pick it up too often but some of the players are like that too like i still remember olaf meister putting a hole in the desk at Fragbite, like what oh yeah a year and a half right. ago 
where he literally just punched a hole into the desk. Like Bialy's cut his hand open on his keyboard, slamming it on his keyboard before. Like the Vice of Dreamix Summer, like smashed out his keyboard uh, switches. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! Yeah, that's right in the admin. Yeah. Like no, no, wait, that was Crims, wasn't it? Yeah, Crims at yeah, Pro Crims League. Yeah, Crims done it as well. Yeah. You remember that where he like he just like smashes his keyboard, keys fly everywhere, and then like two minutes later, an admin comes up like holding the keys. You know, like. <laughs> Here, t- please take these back. You, know, like, you might, you might need them. Yeah, it's like the shoes button or something. I, shit, you know, people gave me shit for over overhyping it or overreacting to Flusha at E League, but that was like the angriest I've ever seen Flusha. Like Flusha oh, yeah. doesn't necessarily like, oh, like he rarely shows emotion that way. Swedes in general, dude. That's why like, it's the same thing. With, yeah, like you mentioned, all of my straight pride by masters. Like we were super surprised about it. It was like holy shit. Like Fnatic's falling apart now. That was what went through our heads because you'd never see it from any Swede ever. You don't just see raw emotion that way, no. Yeah. Especially guys like I mean, Flusha. That like I was just like, what the fuck? Like he hit his table and like his mouse goes flying and shit. I was like, what is going on? That's it. Sadness. That's it. They've lost. Yeah. Like, basically, you know that it's like the the mental checkout happens at that point. Yeah. Nah. Like uh, every every I think every player goes through it. Like every player has those moments. It's just a matter if it gets caught on camera or not. <laughs> it, that's yeah. Well, well, like I guess that's like the big thing with all these uh, these uh, these um, cameras now on the players all the time is that we're actually getting to see it a lot more. Like you're seeing the the, the Twitch clips or whatever make it to the front page where it's like Miggy's boy slamming <laughs> his desk or yeah, Kenny S. Sure. You know, uh, Kenny S. Showing frustration after failing a clutch. Yeah. Oh and, yeah. By the way, side note on that. I wish events would start placing the webcams not on top of the monitors. Yeah. Because you have so many players who sit close to the PC. Like take Alu, for instance. You don't really see Alu on his face cam. You literally just see the top of his head. Yeah. The entire game. So like just place it, I don't know, like underneath the monitor, like a little bit behind, so you get like a side angle or something. This is the, you're, you're talking about something that would involve a little bit too much work here then. Yeah, it's like moving stuff. It's pretty, pretty tough. I mean, that's that. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I've you got to think about that, right? Because you want it to be well centered, but then it has to be adjusted each time. Like, an admin basically has to have the player sit in the position that he's going to sit in when he plays the game yeah. each time. Like, there has to be a setup period where it's like, right, okay, within the next three minutes, like we're gonna have every camera individually lined up. But imagine how hilarious it would be, like, if you place the cam on the table, the yeah. player has a fit. And just smashes the table, and the camera just goes flying. That like, would how be, amazing would that be? You know, what would be more amazing is that the feed just dies because the guy <laughs> just slammed the camera without realizing it. You know? Oh, that'd be amazing. I, I want that to happen. I mean, obviously the producers and like the director aren't going to be too happy about that. But I mean, shit. Everybody would, else is going to be. happy. Everybody else is going to be like, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, that. Would it's be all about ca- capturing raw emotion, right? I, no, that's that's the thing, right? I mean, I don't know. I used to think that the split cam was in, was interesting in one v one situations because you did actually just like really get to see it in large format the the person's reaction when they lost or they won. But um, actually now, like I'm I'm pretty against the split cam. Like I've kind of changed my opinion on that because it just means there's too much shit on the screen to look at. Yeah, yeah. So I mean. But yeah, like for the, for a while, that was actually one of my arguments, which was I was just like, you know, but but we get to see pimp you know, boom, like slam his desk or like, you know, go crazy. I think it was at DreamHack Tours when they were first, then when we were really starting to get into like the whole split cam thing and DreamHack were the first, I think, to really push the whole like changing camera based on who you're obsing in game. Yeah. And then I think it was DreamHack Tours last year. Yeah. That, uh, that we, we got to see those kinds of like plays like pimp losing. I think it was like that one V two or something on dust two B site. And he was, uh, he just like raged, like flipped his shit. I think the best thing you can do is probably like instead of having split cams, you just focus on one guy in in the one v one, regardless of how it like pans out. You mm-hmm. just kind of commit to a player and, and stick with that guy, and just make sure that production has a second observer PC uh, PC that has you know like a obviously like a player cam feed and everything going on on an, you know on a different uh, different scene, so right. you can have like the reaction shot, uh, you know, with the replay afterwards. So then you do get the most the best worlds, even though it's a replay for you know the other you know, for one half of them. 
still better than not you know not necessarily seeing it and i think it's also better than just having a split screen because that's going to take your focus away from everything because you kind of want to see the reaction from the guy winning and losing at the same time but you don't have four eyes so it's kind of an impossible job right as a viewer yeah exactly that's the thing it's just a. Uh... I mean, I, I guess your eye settles on just what you want to watch, right? But yeah. it just feels too confusing because you're just not going to be able to adjust everything. Like, I, I mean, it, more people that I talk to about watching games and watching CS in particular, right? And it's people who don't watch CS, for example. It's like guys coming from LOL or from Dota or, or not even gaming, just like they've watched a stream once and then, yeah. right? And so Tune talk- in to CBS on a Friday night. You know, I'm talking to these guys, right? And um, and the majority of the time, what they're saying is, it's just like I I actually get like motion sickness sometimes from how quick the camera moves. It's just jumping all over the place, and I have no idea what I'm watching because it's just constantly changing, right? Yeah. And if that that kind of slots into, it feels like the new trend, or at least the trend that E League are trying to push, and that I'm I'm pretty much like 100 percent behind now is to actually just stay on somebody 70 percent of the round or something. And like you're just you're just following this guy, and you and obviously that's going to take more knowledge on the observer's part, right? Because they're going to have to know that this guy's going to play the, the the contact position, or this guy's going to play like one of those. I mean, you can obviously switch, but you're staying more, longer on one guy, and and then if action happens on the other side of the map, you're not going to try and flip over there really quick to go and catch it. Instead, you're going to count on the replay yeah. actually showing that, right? You know, so it's just like you have action on a site, shit went down on B, you show that on replay afterwards and say, oh, right, this happened, we missed it, but here you go, right? I don't know. What do you think about yeah, that? No, 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 I like that idea, but the, you know, not every tournament is going to have that luxury of you know, a studio setting like E-League. Well, I don't think you need a studio setting like E-League. I think well, you, need you need two you observers, need... right? And most, well, of the, most of the tournaments are running two observers right now, aren't they? Well, you need two observers. Well, then you're going to need a third observer right, as well, because if you're going to do two observers doing each and every game, then nobody's going to get a break, and the observer's going to die eventually. Well, that's fair. So, because <laughs> I've been through that. Uh, yeah, speaking from experience. Not, yeah. yeah, yeah, like sitting in a production booth, uh, just locked away from the outside world for about 14 to 15 hours. <laughs> it, it, it weighs on you. Uh, but, no, I, I definitely like the way, as long as you, you have kind of like a backup plan for what you want to do to show what happened, you know, off camera, mm-hmm. then... You know, it's perfectly fine. Uh, but, yeah, you, you need to have that in place. Otherwise, I think you kind of just have to live with the fact that people are jumping around here and there. Obviously, you want to keep it at a minimum and not just, like, chase frags desperately. Uh, but you need to find a nice middle ground if you don't have multiple uh, multiple observers or multiple feeds. I think that, yeah, that would be the, the question then. Is it, like, a 10 PC setup for the feeds? Well, that so, would be the dream, right? Right, and, then and you don't necessarily need an observer for each one. Like you uh, have yeah. a director who's sitting there watching the ten feeds. Exactly. So if you if you have, uh, you only need one dedicated observer, and if you have ten additional feeds, yeah, you just need. Well, again, I guess that's where you can get the second observer, which would be, I guess, a more re- relaxing job because you don't have to, you know, worry about swapping around. Here and they kind of just have to have a rough overview of where people are going to be, be uh, you know, meeting each other mm-hmm. pretty much and having impact. So you can just pick out plays here and there. That would be you know the best way of going about it. Well, Ven, you have. Uh, well, I mean, that was obviously the issue I think with um, with uh, Cologne that uh, the observing it wasn't actually the observers. It was the observers their feeds feeding into the director who didn't really. Managed to get much going on there. It seemed like he was swapping all over the place. Like the observing was super yeah. shit, basically. And, and it wasn't because of the observers, unfortunately. Apparently, it was the director who was fucking everything up. So, I mean, well, that was just a... Yeah, that was rough to that watch. That whole event was just a total disaster on a few things, production side. It was, like, so good throughout the group stages. And then you get to the playoffs, and you're like, hi, it's, like, this is where it really matters. And then you don't get to see, like, 90% of what's going on. And there's no... And, and that's the scenario where you don't really have the backup plan either yeah. to actually showcase and they'll like showcase stuff that happened off screen it's just like well that kind of happened and then you get a replay from you know the guy that was spectating you know, or, you know the same feed that you saw live so you basically just watch a kill feed in replay it's like okay super okay. useful maybe that's what we do then you know when we get tired of analysis or commentary we just go into production man fucking own all of these kids just be like sure. we know what's up we know how I to like, put on the I'll, best show Alchemist or 
teach us his ways. Yeah, exactly. You know, we team up, you know, we take Alchemist, you know, basically we cherry pick from all sorts of different uh, productions to make the super production to it. Dude, this will be, yeah. Oh man. Scoots. Like this could be like the phase of production, except I don't want to say that because phase don't get out of groups and just, you know, they've got a shitload of talent, but they suck really. And so, you know, it's just like, we're, we're going to be like the phase, but we're going to be like a successful phase. I don't know how it works. <laughs> like the, the optimal phase, the full potential phase. Yeah. The full potential phase. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. Right. Like in an ideal world where phase we're playing like a team we're stars aligned every single day. Exactly. You know, going, you know, decider match. That's, that's how it would have to be. Right. Decider match of the tournament. Um, I mean, maybe you can speak to this, but Betta Fish Stickle, right? Being a cameraman for esports must be incredibly boring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a fucking terrible job, honestly. Or at least it was when I did it. Because, uh, well, I, I, I'm assuming things have gotten better with time. I would, I would hope so. Uh, but from my experience, it was oftentimes you, you show up, uh, like three or four hours before anything happens because call times in esports. Yes, uh, which and, is still the bane of our existence. Yeah, uh, and you know when you try to argue like, well, uh, couldn't I show up like an hour before because I literally there's literally nothing for me to do. It's like no, no, we need you to set up and everything, and then you know show up four hours early, type in the two console commands you need to do, and execute your config. <laughs> then you're done. <laughs> Then you sit there. You haven't had hotel breakfast, of course, because you have to be at the venue so early. Uh, and food doesn't arrive until midday. But that doesn't really help you because you were the sole observer for the entire event. So you have to do every game. So you don't really have any time to actually walk out of the production booth to get food. Mm -hmm. And depending on who your producer or director is for the event, some, some uh, were you know, thoughtful enough to actually look out for you and bring you food. No shout out to Sinto, who did uh, Gamescom the first year I observed. Um, but yeah, so yeah, you get food like at times if you're lucky, or or you run into the fun uh, fun experience of you know coming out of the production booth after a best of three, you know, like your third best of three in a row, to see a bunch of KFC emptied out on the table next to you, which is always a good time. <laughs> Dude, this, and, yeah. this is just painful. Uh, it, it was rough, man. And like the, the fact that the days are so long and you started so early and you're just you haven't had sleep for four days and everything. Obviously, like your performance level is gonna go to shit as well. So eventually, like you start, you know, it's like falling falling asleep behind the wheel. Mm -hmm. You just lose focus. You're not paying attention at all, and you kind of zone out at times, which is again an awful experience for everyone who's watching. But you know, you're kind of trapped in that prison cell that is the, the observer booth. I think the observer, like the observer function or role is probably one of the most undervalued. Oh, yeah. Undervalued, nice. underpaid, under just, you know, you're like, you, you're the, appreciated. You're the sure. director of the show, you know, like yeah. you're you're showing what is going on to the screen. You have the, you have the hand of God pretty much. Yeah. Observer. Like you, you control pretty much what kind of excitement the viewer get out of watching the tournament yeah but you can tell like what kind of a massive impact it has on a tournament if you compare the group stages of cologne to the playoffs of cologne like what kind of a difference it makes to actually have people who are able to to catch the action now, again the, well that wasn't on the on the observers uh at cologne that was on the producer but you know like if things doesn't go smoothly then it's not that great to watch i wonder who sucks. uh well i wonder what the fallback is there for uh tournament organizers Right? In, what way? Like, in in the sense that if if an observer tried to tried to basically put up a fight and ask for more stuff, basically, right? Yeah. Like, what's the fallback there? Is is a turn is a to just thinking, okay, we'll get another guy. Maybe he's not as good, but it'll be good enough. Or I think, or we'll have the commentators go back to doing the observing. Sadly, I think that would be. I, I think for a lot of tournaments, that would be the the fallback plan. Yeah. Instead of just giving giving the, them the rightful rate they deserve, in a sense, uh, they would much rather go with something cheap, and then they can, you know, say that you know this is a process, you know, we're training up a new guy, type of deal. <laughs> yeah. Which rarely ends well. Uh, usually, you know, Reddit will 
unleash their fury. Agile TD as well. Like, and it's going to be a shit experience for the guys, you know, gone from maybe observing a couple of online games here and there for that league into, you know, being kind of in control of a broadcast for, you know, 250, 300,000 people. And if that's a shit experience, then, you know, he's going to get a ton of backlash. That's going to feel like shit. He probably doesn't want to do it anymore because, well, you know, that's just a, you know, basic human reaction to it. If you get a lot of shit for, you know, something you put out, then you, it's easy to lose motivation. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, uh, sadly, I, 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 I could see a lot of tournaments going that route. I would hope that they, they kind of suck it up and, and give them what they're worth. Because yeah. they're super important. I, I, it's a, it's something that I've been wondering uh, in the past because you know observers often get kind of left by the wayside. Like when it comes to invoicing, they have problems. You know, they're not taken as seriously when it comes to like just a bunch of things. You know, it seems like observers you know kind of get the the short end of the stick when I you know they do seem at least to me to be one of the more core parts of the show, even though they aren't on the show yeah it's like it's like an actor doing a fucking full cgi movie you know i don't know like they're not yeah. on camera but they're pretty goddamn important if they're being modeled or they're being or they're the ones you well, know, who, like who do voice everything. actors right i don't like, know I don't, that like, probably wasn't the best analogy no no, no it works because like imagine having like a superly good voice actor for like one of these pixar movies right that kind of makes the character you're watching Mm -hmm. makes it more believable makes it more enjoyable to watch makes him potentially you know funnier or what have you depending on the situation and if you just had any random guy off the street that would probably sound like shit Mm -hmm. and then you'd be like holy shit i can't believe this guy got a job (laughs) Well, that Doc, kind of deal. Like Ducky Makura right now is bringing up something as well. It's like the only thing I hate is that cameraman focusing on the audience. Every oh god! Round. Yeah. I okay. I, I and I know this irks. Uh, well, like it irks analysts. It bothers commentators and well, yeah, a lot of people watching as well as the fact that a lot of stuff like of importance happen after the bomb goes off for instance or you know when one guy's trying to save a weapon or something sure and uh way too often uh you'll have directors just you know changing to audience views or like uh, a player cam or something like that instead to kind of get a reaction just real quick after the round sure. even though there's way more important stuff happening in game at that point that you're never going to see and if you don't have a direct feed of the game on a monitor nearby you, you're completely out of it. And like for for a commentator, like you would know this, you and Andrews, whenever you do an event and you you have a desk that doesn't have like a, a direct feed to the game. Well, that's what happened at Cologne. Like, yeah, like you, you'd have no idea of actually like knowing the money situation. You, you have no idea if the guy who's trying to save actually survived or not because it was super tense. Like one of the T's was coming around the corner. Like he could have gotten this little like the CT if the CT survives, then he's going to be able to drop. They can actually force spy and still be in the game. But if he dies, they're going to be super fucked because they're, you know, they're going to have to eco one round and everything. Mm-hmm. Like so much of that shit gets lost because you're going to have super, well, unessential camera shots of crowds. You know, oftentimes it's you know people holding up a sign or something. Like, sure, it's cool that people are showing support in the crowd, but. I don't really give a shit about that. Neither do I, but it's fun because basically those signs, you know, going going off of the community reaction, those signs might be, you know, might be the last time we see the signs at Dreamhack. <laughs> yeah. It's true. It's true. Yeah. 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 Nice way. Nice segue. No, it's it's true. Because <laughs> at uh, Cologne, it was exactly that, right? Because I like personally, I'm not a huge fan of the PGL style, like production because i just Mm -hmm. feel like they're doing way too much shit that gets in the way of actually looking at the game right and so me as a commentator like well basically what happened is we did one game and it was just you know all all of that shit going on on the screen and trying to cast with that was just like nope and so uh we we actually got them to rig a, a clean feed straight in right like just just give me the observer's point of view with none of the fluff. Just give me the observer's point of view. And then you have a, you have a, a, a program out monitor that's showing all the fluff and everything. And so you can see both. And so, you know, if it's, if something's actually going on in game, that's uh, that's all you really care about seeing. Right. Yeah. Like the, those signs that had, yeah, there are bomb site A and B there B. Yeah. I, I, 
I, I pretty I, I doubt that. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually surprised that it hasn't happened sooner. That somebody trolled that way and actually did it. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, that was one of the first things I thought thought about. I just thought it was so ridiculous. It's just it like is. it's like so obviously it's just obviously these kids are just trolling. So like, who gives a shit? Like it's just oh, obviously a lot of people are gonna be super angry about it. And everybody got so tilted about it because it's just like oh, but VP could you know the thing is is like yeah they could any of the teams could because it's not like in those booths for example like tournament organizers using booths it's not like the booths are one way either. Yeah. In uh, you know, it's not like one-way glass where they see themselves. I mean, obviously, if there are back, if there's backlighting in the booths and it's dark outside of the booths, okay, it's a little bit harder to see through. But that doesn't stop you from having a coach. Like the sign is just is just come on. All you need is somebody with a lamp or something up in the yeah. up in, like you know one-way glass or anything like that. You just need somebody with like a light. You know, like two clicks B, one click A, or you know, like a red light and a and a white light. You know, blue, uh, red light, B. There you go. Yeah. So you don't see the light? All right, they're, they're, they're going A, guys. They're going A. Like, I don't know. There's all sorts of ways to, 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 yeah. to, to, to do this. But it was like, clearly, they were these kids were just trolling. So, I mean, and they got what they wanted, I guess. You know, they, they fed the trolls. It was perfect. True. True. They got a lot of a lot of PR for that. I think they got banned from the event, though. <laughs> so. Pardon me? You know, I think they got banned from or tossed out from the event. They did, yeah, they did. I, I'm pretty sure they did. So that was that was what like the DreamHack statement afterwards or something like that. You know, it's just like yeah. they got immediately removed from the from the venue. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, they could have landed. So I guess the next next step is getting those interrogation glasses, right? The the what? The interrogation glasses, like you know how it is in like well the, the wire, for instance, right? You put a guy in, in an interrogation room. Uh huh. And uh, well, yeah, it's like the one-sided glasses, right? So yeah, you can yeah, see yeah. through on one side, and it's just like a mirror on the other one. I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna you have to be that. the next step. One-way glass. One-way one glass. I mean, the thing is, is that one-way glass gets defeated if um, there's light coming in from the other side. So that's well, where. Like, well, I like it has to be a really fucking strong light, though, doesn't it? I guess. It's mirror glass. Yeah, one-way glass. I mean, yeah, that, that like how you know. This like is the thing, though. If guys are showing up like with divers, flashlights and shit, then you should probably get suspicious, right? I mean, end of the if day, bro. If somebody's watching with a phone waving around, then I wouldn't be too worried. End of the day, and I've been saying this since the good show, is what, what do you want if you want it to be totally insulated from caster sound, from crowd sound or crowd reactions, being able to see the crowd, they need to be in a bunker. And so what needs yeah. to happen is the stage itself, like the COD World Champ stage, right? Yeah. So you see, you, know, you see what I mean, right? They're like really raised up. What happens is you don't actually see the players. They, they, they kind of go down into the stage. And into the stage is actually just like cement lined or something, right? Like they, they get lowered into cement boxes that then a lid comes down on. And then that's it. They're sealed off from the world. And there we go. That's that's how it has to happen, right? And then you know the, the, they win or whatever. And of course, what tournaments would do as <laughs> Comes well? Comes back up again. <laughs> yeah, this this is what tournaments would do to maintain a schedule as well. You know, give them a limited amount of airtime when they're sealed off. So you know, you can't go to overtime. There you go. Cost, you know, that's going to cost you. Otherwise, <laughs> they they shut off the you. air going into the exactly. boxes or something, right? You know, like actually that talk about motivation that's how you yeah. motivate players you know <laughs> for every round of overtime it, it keeps going like the o2 coming into the room lowers or something like <laughs> highly motivated see, to like, finish this the game. is where you're gonna see like bolivian teams like people who grew up in la paz and stuff like that really start to shine in cs mm. like they can function with a <laughs> What is it, lower price? Oh, uh, right. Like yeah, of course. Air, right? No, no, no. It's going to be like, what are they? No, no, no. It's going to be the Kenyans, man. Just like yeah, in the Kenyans long distance running. Kenyans. Yeah. It's going to be the Kenyans that are just that, that like actually move into CS and win everything because they can win in those high pressure situations. <laughs> Oxygen no, deprivation go kicking in. It's like, going to be CS five years from now. <laughs> Well, I mean that's that's the that's the funny thing, right? Because like League of Legends, for example, it's a travesty because they're playing in a forty thousand seat stadium. The noise generated by that crowd, like the players can't even communicate with each other. They even yeah. with the headsets on, like the you know the riot refused they, they to have use, booths yeah, because they, that yeah. would limit the limit the interaction. 
But with the headsets on, the headsets aren't doing shit. All, like the, the players can't even hear one player talking to another player over TeamSpeak. So it literally turns into a pug. You know, like that's the game, right? Like can't calm. So, you know, just ping a lot and hope, hope for the best. Like this is our strat, guys. Stick to the strat. Stick to the strat. Dota. It's SEA Dota right there. It, it's Pings just, and X marks. So what we get, we get. Oh, you know, and if you think it's just Riot, I mean, it's the same thing for the CS uh, for the big CS tournaments operating with only headsets. If you're playing in front of a crowd of twenty thousand people, you're gonna hear just like Rawr! like a lot of noise coming at oh, your yeah. face, right? Like the mic's gonna pick up stuff. Like it, it can only isolate so much, mm -hmm. and it doesn't just pick up voices like your teammates' voices. It's gonna be like the crowd roar. Ooh, not bad. Put the players away from the stage, but you put a fake booth with the screen at the front, so it looks like the players are sitting there. Lersha, good good on you, man. You could cool. do that. You that create like a the, proxy stage. Like how baller wouldn't that be? Like, do you know, like the two-pack hologram? I'm thinking, like, that's what he's thinking, right? So you can project the players in the booths. Oh, this is like some international shit, you know, where they were projecting the, the, the characters in front shit. of the booths. Valve are, good, Valve are gonna steal this idea and they're gonna use it for TI7. Oh, Guaranteed. shit. Because you could but, do it. You could actually have, like, a proxy stage and then you set up the cameras and everything for that proxy stage and, and then it's just getting projected onto the screen. And so you don't have to worry. The players, you know, they're, they're out in a different building or something. You know, yeah, they can yeah. play the game. Or they're in back rooms. Oh, audience still get to see the reactions. It's all good. Oh, this I th is. I, th I think we solved it. I think we solved it, dude. I think that's yeah. it. Like that is that's got to be the play. I'm just I'm still a fan of like the the reverse the reverse rising stage, right? Instead that they like their their desks just go down into a bunker. I mean, I think that could be pretty cool too. I mean, that you could really increase the the odds or like the stakes of the game as well. I mean, like the losing team, the bunker gets filled in. They just die. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know, like just you hear like a... muffled explosions, you know, like <laughs> It's like what oh, what's the movie called again? Um uh japanese horror movie or like thriller movie they like a bunch of school kids gets like sent to an island battle royale battle royale there you go oh yeah so yeah you have battle royale tournament for cs like the the last one of the year of course it's gonna be the final extravaganza only one team survives and then that literally. guy then then the question is you know that like does he get because like he would need to win oh, all the prize money, basically. Like all the prize money would have to go yeah. to him, so that he doesn't have to come back and play again next year. Or does he have to come back and play again next year? Because they can get about... like they can get immunity if they do a certain thing, right? Like you can like like you can create like even more intensity within the team. Like so, let's say you're uh, obviously like if you beat a team, they you know they're just sent out into the wilderness with you know pots and pans to destroy each other, which sure. obviously could be streamed on another stream. Uh, but then you have like you also you know make an incentive for mutiny within the teams. Fantastic! So, it's like the French right? scene on crack. Exactly. So <laughs> basically, you know, you just give like it's like you said, like you know, okay, so you slip, let's say, Sipnix an envelope mid game. And, you know, during a tactical pause or something, it's like, if you team kill three of your opponents, you will grant, be granted immunity and be placed on a different team that, you know, progresses to the semifinals. You know, Sweet and, and you're, you're going to get like 75% of the winnings from, you know, Astralis or something. Sweet. See who takes the deal. Like, who just like has no soul. And it's like professional. So it's not even like match fixing. It's part of the game. Yeah. The, you know, <laughs> undermining the other team you get and they're like no no holds barred no rules zipnix yeah. opens that that envelope it's actually a picture of his mom like you know duct tape just <laughs> like with the game <laughs> i don't know that's then horrible the, that's like, horrible then you have the guy from saw just like because it, obviously like it's it's a like pretty legit envelope with a card in it like it's a greeting card that has like one of those things when you open them they start playing like a sound file it's gonna be the saw guy. Like, you want to play a game? <laughs> really? Like, there, there was actually somebody brought up a good point. Hold on, velocity one G. I think we've got the solution for his point as well. That you know that completely takes away the emotion and experience from pro players from being able to play in front of a big crowd, right? You uh, know, the thing is, what needs to happen is that on the on the front of these fake screen booths, right? Obviously fake screen booths, right? There's also a camera that's facing out towards the crowd. 
And so in front of the players, when they're playing in their bunker or room or where, wherever we're putting them, you know, I, I still favor bunker, but okay. Um, you basically put a big screen TV in front of them and then they can see the crowd. There you go. Yeah. Problem, problem solved. solved. And, and you can have like light, uh, you know, light volume kind of thing going on. So, you know, they get the ambience from, from the crowd. It doesn't, you know, break their ears or anything, but you hear like vague shouts from the crowd. No, exactly. You know, like that, that's, that could, uh, hold on. How can we do this? You know, like you just need like a noisemaker basically. Uh, you know, like you'll have like an admin crew whose job it is to simulate actually playing, you know, like it's whether like that's, whether that's movies, instruments, right? right? You know what they do for movies, right? Like, the, like if you want to get the, the sound of like a horse running, for instance, you don't actually like just take the raw sound bite from, from what you've filmed. Mm -hmm. You have like a guy in the back room sitting with like, like a coconut and a wooden log, just like slap it on it oh to make yeah, yeah, yeah dude do you know that in the monty python like the holy grail i, I like i don't know random tidbit yeah apparently the coconut thing came from them actually not having the budget for actual horses <laughs> and like, so they're like go. what can we do we don't have the money for horses right so, coconuts go exactly so you know the, you you have people actually do that for a living so you know just get those guys to train the admins they'll sit there with i don't know what they can eat like oil barrels and shit just like knocking on stuff with iron whatever the fuck uh-huh you know but it's like they, they win the game the admins act like the fans running up to them with signs to sign and like cameras <laughs> oh, yeah. and stuff you know exactly and then they, they win the tournament you just have like those little party popper like firecracker things like psh, you know like little streamers <laughs> I mean, at, at a certain point we're gonna have to introduce cgi right to all of this yes. so we can just cgi in a, in a crowd that runs towards the booths or something <laughs> And then, and then, oh man, is this like, we're going too deep now, man. We're going too deep. <laughs> I feel so like you I'm, can pitch a lot of this to, to Turner. I'm seeing like the CGI stuff, you know, where it's like, when is the FPS that going to happen that actually is like directly wired into your brain so that you feel what your character feels in game? You know, I'm just, I'm just waiting Shit for is going to get like, real. I'm just waiting for the first team based like Oculus Rift kind of game. Yeah. Like FPS game. Holy shit. You know, grenade goes off, you get like electrically shocked or something. Like if you get Zeus yeah. in game, you get Zeus in real life. <laughs> It'd be too fucking fun. But you know, obviously no no lasting physical damage. Maybe some slight Bro. shifts in personality. I mean that electric <laughs> electricity, you know, going through but, it might not be a good it's but part of the game, part of the game. I mean, you see American football players, right? They, you know, that's, that's what I'm saying, right? It's, it's what, what's a concussion? Big. They don't get concussed. That's all bullshit. Yeah. That is genetics. You know, they, he was predisposed to losing his mind. There you go. That's actually that, crazy I shit. Think, like, I there was that video that Will Smith did, that movie that Will Smith did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Where it's like the guy who was obviously trying to fight for the football player's rights about... Uh, it's like the Nigerian doctor or something. Yeah, what was it called? Oh, I, mean, I think it was concussed or concussion or something like that. Yeah, it's yeah, concussed or something like that. But that good, good movie, guys. Go and watch that if you want. I mean, the thing, like, what could be happening here is that, um, you know, it's like nothing. Nothing is like the spokesperson, basically, that, um, you know, you, playing video games doesn't actually lead to wrist issues, right, or anything like that. Basically, yeah. you know, nothing. He was just like, no, 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 it's not, it's not wrist issues. I, I just fap a lot, you know? Like, that's the thing. It's, an, it's obviously something else that is causing the physical I can, harm, I, right? I can see that PSA coming out. I, you know, that's the thing, you know? Like... What is it? What is it? Your dick beaters or some shit like that? <laughs> I feel like if, if we get all of these ideas implemented, they're like wrist issues are going to be the least of the problems. It's going to be like massive onset of PTSD or something. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to ruin lives. I love it. Yeah. I'm all about it's, it. It's going to be good entertainment. I feel though. like there's just so much we could still explore. Then there's so much we could still do. It's true. So, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's the thing. Like someday, someday you and I will be at the helm. We'll have survived all of this shit and we'll be the ones left standing running the show. And then there's going to be real money in esports, and we're going to be able to actually have this sort of stuff like real life gladiators. That's what I'm talking about. It's like that movie gamer, you know, where it's like the kids controlling like the prison convicts or whatever, oh, you know, yeah. and the shooters, you know, like, like, Oh, guy dies in the game. Doesn't matter. Kid's still alive. Yeah, we're getting, dark. we're getting dark. But yeah, and I love the fact that we got here from the ESO one tournament somehow. <laughs> yeah, I right. Have no idea how we got well, here. This is this is you know like the, the like ESL one. You know that's the level of insanity that was there, and it's basically bleeding through into you know it's it's carried through with us. You know, so now whenever we talk about Cologne, we just naturally 
you know, just basically mind just starts running off screaming into a different path so that it's not confronted <laughs> with what's actually in front of it yeah sounds about right i think so i think so and yes 200 word essay go bang that out you can nail that in uh, 15 minutes 20 minutes i don't know i actually can't remember how long, how long would, it, would it take to actually write a 200 word essay I mean, it depends on the topic, right? I if guess. it's just whatever the fuck you want, basically do a recap of what we've talked about. There you go. There you minutes. go. I won't even, you know, come after you for copyright or whatever. Like, just, just go. <laughs> just do it. Yeah. Only problem is if your teacher watches the podcast. Yeah. Bad. But, yeah, yeah. But, you know, you have to take risks. That's the thing. life getting baited i so uh so, I, I guess at this point we can touch on the third game of round one of uh new york right sk versus the na qualifier team yeah because we straight off from g2 astralis into this i you know like um what how how can we do this man sk versus the na qualifier team i mean basically uninterrupted uh, Fur is back. I mean, I don't really care about like. I think SK right now are pretty much like the top dogs, and they should they should be able to come back and be the team to beat in this yeah. tournament. I think that's that should be pretty clear cut, unless G two can somehow run into them. But it looks like they're going to be on opposite sides of the bracket. So, well, no, I mean, it being Swiss format, right? So is it Swiss? Say, is it is this actually Swiss? No, Wait. it's group stage, right? So oh, round one, like if G two beat Astralis, SK beat. Optic, Cloud9, whoever goes through it. That's NHL right, that's right, that's right. So then there will be, they will play against each other at one point. There will be blood. There will be blood, I like it. Yeah. More blood. I, I actually like how, like, a lot of these matchups are, are set up, like, in terms of storylines, obviously. Uh, like, if you go with, like, Navi Liquid, for instance, obviously simple with Navi now going up against Liquid. Yeah. After after leaving them and everything, it's, like, Pimp's opportunity to show that, you know, he can be as valuable of an asset. A simple, even though that's a pretty, you know, pretty tough pretty, shoot. Pretty to tall tell. order. Yeah. Pretty <laughs> tall. Uh, so, you know, it's a lot of cool storylines going into that, uh, honestly. And I think, it, like, regardless of what happens and how the first round goes in terms of who wins and who loses, you're going to get pretty sick round two matches as well. I mean, I mean, it's bound to happen because all of eight teams that are going there are pretty sick. It's, it's going to be a bloodbath, dude. Yeah, like, I'm actually really excited it's about be this. Five rounds of it as well. That's the best part. So we're gonna get so many good matches, even oh. before the playoff gets started. All right, who's not gonna make it? I think Liquid don't make it. Make yeah. the cut right out of the groups. I don't think but that Liquid like have have the four, right. Pardon me. Top four goes through. Top four goes through. So yeah, I'm thinking the I'm thinking all left side actually. BP, <laughs> basically, <G2> escape, <laughs> Navi. I, I, that's that's yeah. kind of. I like we're into big upset territory even with Olaf. Um I mean you got Lecro and Twist for some heavy hitters. It, it has been but, playing really well as of late. Yeah, shit. You know, it's like on a good day, Fnatica could beat VP. Yeah, so yeah. they could get they could sneak a win out there somewhere. The, the worry for me is the fact that because it's was format, like just getting a win, if it would have been a round robin or GSL format, one win would have meant yeah. so much. Yeah, that's fair. But here, it's like you win one game. It's like, well, you still got four to go. So, you know, you can still go one and four very yeah. easily because there's so many good teams here. And, you know, like, it's not like it, with Swiss format, your matches are not going to get easier if you win. That's kind of the cool part about it because if VP wins versus Fnatic and G2 wins versus Astralis and then go then they go up against each other, that like that's not an easy matchup at all. Mm-hmm. Same thing goes, you know, happens if you go 2 0. I, I can't remember who it was actually, but I think it was one of the teams during the Katowice qualifier who went up 2 0 and then ended up going 2 and 3. Was it the group phase or? Uh, I think the entire qualifier was just Swiss groups, right? Oh, shit. Yeah. So That's when they first did the Swiss group format, wasn't it? Yeah. So I think it was one team. I can't remember who, though, but I, I, I have this inkling that one team went 2 0. Got off to a great start, then faltered completely. Went two and three, didn't qualify for the major. That or that type of thing, because you needed three wins or four wins or something to. <sighs> I fucking hate searching for things on HLTV. I swear, dude, it's dude cancer. just Liquipedia. Yeah, Liquipedia. that's uh, that's exactly everything. what I'm doing. I'm sorry, Peter, if you're watching this. You're probably not watching this. You've got better shit to do. But um, <laughs> definitely, I feel so bad. Just, just horrible. Going to Liquipedia right now for my uh, information. 
But then again, we've talked about this in the past, bro. You know what I you know, yeah, yeah. So uh, let's see. Give me the main page, god damn it. Right, there we go. Completed. Uh, but the, where's the history on Liquid again? God, God, fucking competition <laughs> tournaments. There it is. Okay. Uh, premier events, and this will. This is gonna go way back. Uh, what is it? March two thousand sixteen. It was in March. Wasn't it? Or yeah, it was, was in it March, wasn't it? Jesus. Is this two thousand sixteen now? I'm I'm looking yeah, at two thousand sixteen. Yes. I'm, I'm, well, I'm not sure if you're looking at 2016. Oh, it's Intel. It, this is what they call it, right? Intel Extreme Masters X World Championship. Oh, Where the God. fuck is it? There, Katowice. Thank you. Yep, that's Star it. Starlighter is also like painful to actually figure out what tournament is what because they just like they'll have three tournaments, you know, within the span of six months, and they're all named something completely different, even though they're like the successor of each other. Yeah, it's just a mess trying to figure out. Jesus, what happened where? It's so fun how things change, even in the space of six months. Like even going back now and looking at some of these, it's just like, Efrag, we're still a team back then, like <laughs> yeah. capable of beating other teams. That like, Copenhagen <laughs> Wolves still had a roster back then, yeah, and somehow lost to Mouse Sports, <laughs> and were never heard from again. The Hund was left go, let loose, to run in the wild, howl at the moon, lick his balls. I mean, pretty much that's. He's back again, though. He is back, actually. Yeah, hold on. But I'm trying to find... There's like 10 pages of qualifiers here. European Qualifier 1, European Qualifier 2. IEM Season 10 Taipei, which, uh, okay. was, which was basically... I got the link for the offline qualifier. That was Mongols getting in for... Uh, yeah, you, you're just taking uh, a, like a detour here. North I, American I Qualifier that's... was not Swiss format. All of these are single brackets, man. Dude, I, I linked you on Skype. You linked me on... I can't look at Skype. Okay, where can I link you? Jesus Christ, DM me. Okay, that works. Twitter? That should work. Okay. I can't look at Skype. I made this mistake last week. <laughs> God damn it, son! You had one job. I had one job and I failed. All right, let's see here. Uh, no, fuck. That's the wrong button. There you go. Bam. DM you right now. Well, I felt my phone buzz. That's a good sign. That is a good sign in general. That was 16 team Swiss format. Jesus, what was this? Oh, this was for Cologne. Yeah, yeah you know, we're, we're, we're coming back to fucking Katowice over here up in this bitch. Yeah, well, yeah, the qualifier was hosted in Katowice. Motherfuck. Who, so won, their that, fir- like, who won their first two games? Uh, no, and then no, bailed no. out. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Let's see, round high. I think you're lying to us, bro. Let's see here. Okay, G2 went up 2-0. Then they lost 16 to 1 versus Mouse. Gambit also went 2 0. Uh, and then. No other team went 2 0 and failed to make it out. All right. Yeah, I must be remembering wrong. I mean, G2 came fucking close. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because G2 started 2 0, lost to Mouse in horrible fashion with Dennis just going apeshit, getting like 9 million frags. Then they lost to Gambit in their next game. So then they were two and two. Yeah. And then they had to play the deciding game versus Cloud9. So they, yeah, it was G2 I uh, thought about. I was thinking of. My main problem here with Liquid, you know, it's sick that we can check the results, right? Yeah. But, um, like, where I want the stats now. They have to give me, like, a full stat page. You want more. More. I need more. Like you, you want it for the the Kata, oh, Cologne qualifier in Katowice? Pardon me. Well, what tournament are you looking for the stats? No, no, I was, I was, you know, I'm just speaking in general. Or just I'm, in general. I'm, okay. just, I'm just, gen, you know, just generalizing. <laughs> just, 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 you know. Yeah, but I, I guess the point still stands. Like, regardless of how well you do initially in a Swiss group format it's not going to get any easier like it's going to be ruthless the entire time which is really cool i'm excited yeah dude it's i'm just like brutal. super super envious of the fact that you guys are going to be in the barclay center well why because like the new york knicks play there or something no it's uh the brooklyn nets and that's not much to be envious about i was about to say like i, yeah. I don't even know who the, who plays in the barclay center but no like the the arena itself is brand new and it's like 
super sick. Like it's so dope. Like like the outside of it, just the design and everything looks baller as fuck, especially during night. All right. So make sure you get you know a ton of pictures for Instagram. I don't know and if I want to walk around in Brooklyn at night. Just saying. <laughs> no, no, but like just step outside the center and then just take a picture and then walk inside. I think that's okay. Okay, that's that's. I think, all right. I, think I think you're safe. Yeah. Like it it looks dope as hell, and uh, I'm pretty sure like DSL has a pretty good idea of like a badass stage they can set up. I'm curious how they're gonna work actually with because uh, obviously like it's gonna be like hockey games and and uh, basketball games there uh, most of the time, and like there you have the crowd surrounding the entire arena. That sounds like it's gonna be a nightmare for for the sound guy. Yeah, so, so I'm wondering how they're going to do it if they're basically just going to cut the court in half, have stage on one side, and then just like blank out half of the stadium and just fill up the rest of it. That's probably how it's going to go down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, like, they've been very quiet about ticket sales. So, um, mm. you know, like, who knows? Hopefully it's, uh, fill up. Who knows but it's how many a, people? It's a massive fucking stadium, though. So, but then again, like, there's still a week left. So there's still there. We can still expect the Twitter spam coming from esl pretty soon you know get those last tickets guys because i know like obviously like the the stadium like increases in capacity and, and shrinks and well yeah increases and decreases depending on what kind of uh, setup they have like it's smaller for ice hockey because the, the rink takes more space uh-huh than the basketball court and if they're having a concert there then there's even more room because Obviously, like a stage doesn't take the entire space of a of a basketball court. So I'm I'm guessing it's going to be like well, <laughs> uh, if know. they're cutting it in half, then there will probably be like spots for around like seven thousand plus people or more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably more. Yeah, like, no. I mean, there's going to be space. It's it's just yeah. If they if they can fill it up, it's going to be fucking yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of distracted now. <laughs> That's actually one of the things that annoys me as well. Like, uh, or just like irks me the fact that like sometimes you have games that are not you know being played during prime time sure uh in like whatever location it is so maybe you have a game at like 9 a.m like obviously not a lot of people are going to show up for that but still some producers love to show crowd shots of a fucking empty space it's because they they need to because it's like ingrained in them and it's also because they have no other supporting but it looks Content. so weird. But it looks so yeah. But it looks so weird. Just like keep it in game or keep it on the players or something. I mean, uh, that's what I would say, right? Like keep it. Like I think seventy percent of the time it should be staying. Like sixty to seventy percent of the time it should be staying in in game. And yeah. if you want to show something, then you show it in a picture in picture sort of thing, right? Where yeah. it's like it's not in the way of the scoreboard or the person saving or whatever. Or if yeah. you're going to show it, then show it during the buy period or the buy phase leading into the next round. Like not at the end, immediate end, bomb goes off, boom. Like, I yeah. don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like they, they, they do it because they're like, it's it's just because it's ingrained in you to think, well, actually, maybe, maybe we're coming at this from the wrong angle. Because yeah. I remember E-League... Um, this might be interesting. like okay so i remember e-league during the rehearsals i heard a story coming from the control room that apparently like the head honcho uh running the show was watching and the director wasn't you know switching his cameras enough right okay. and and the director and the, the head honcho was just like you don't you know switch some fucking cameras right and so the director all like just starts like spamming away you know and camera switch camera switch camera switch right and so i wonder if it's like ingrained in them to just to just like oh man i got all these cameras i got to use all these cameras and so they're just doing it right because because they have so many cameras, not because it's like the best part of the show or, or it's adding anything in particular to the show. I feel like most of the time it's it's just just like, want to make the director work. It's not even that. I don't know. It's it's like trying to show, oh my god, look at how many people are in this venue. I don't know. You know, it's like. Uh, well, the problem is when there's not that many people in the venue, right? Yeah. In which case, then you need to have. I don't know. Like, do you have stat pages that come up really quickly, or or no. like, do you, do. You, or is it just, or do you just really only focus on replays? I don't or? think there should be like too much of a, like too much effort that's going to have to be put into it to actually find some filler content. Because we're not talking about an extended period of time, right? We're talking about like 30 seconds between rounds, right? Well, not, well, not even well, that, right? 20 because, now, I guess, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, like short amount of time and it doesn't necessarily have to like pan to camp, like a crowd shot every, between every single round. 
uh, either. So like, let's say you do it like maybe six times during a game or something. Because like at the beginning, it doesn't really matter. Crowd's not going to be too hyped about, you know, Team X winning an anti-eco. That's not going to create a lot of buzz. Mm -hmm. But, you know, once you get towards the later stages, then sure, crowd's going to get more into it. They're going to be, you know, yelling, shouting, jumping, whatever. So then it makes more sense. But if, you know, there's a, uh, you know, that, not that man, many people, you know, in person at the at the venue, then you know, get a couple of stat sheets up or something or like a like player profile kind of thing going on, which doesn't take a lot of time to, to fill out. You know honestly. what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to be selfish All right. and say, give me caster. Camera time. Give me camera time. There you go. Boom! I said but, but that, that could work as well because, like, honestly, like so many of the like, like yeah, you and Anders, Henry and Matt, like, pretty much like all of the the I guess solidified duos and everything uh, when it comes to commentators and CS are really good at just handling dead air and you know, like fill time. Like Let's... that that's that comes like second nature to you guys. You can just sit there for forty minutes and talk shit if it. You know, if it's required of you. So mm -hmm. for you guys to fill, you know, 20 seconds of something, that's no no brainer for you guys. That's not even an issue. Or it's like technical pause or something like, something along those lines. I don't know, because we're sitting there. Camera, there is a camera, but it gets yeah. used 10 seconds out of the game, right? Yeah. And people don't know who's talking to them. I'm just going through my head right now. But, you know, people don't uh, don't know who's talking to them if they're just tuning into the stream. Yeah. And we're like, there's also something about, okay, this is like personal, right? But this, there's something about interacting when you know that somebody's on the camera, because otherwise it's just like, it's just like this, right? You know, I'm leaning back in my chair. Anders is leaning back in his chair and we're just shooting the shit, you know? But yeah. like, if, uh, if the camera's on all of a sudden, you know, you get a little bit more involved, lets you, I don't, it just feels like you're, you're a little bit more into it, right? 30 second window, boom, throw it back to game. If, you know, there's a delay or something, you know, I'm not saying come to us uh, every time, but I'm saying it could be done more often. Oh, for sure, and I think it's I think it's definitely better than than showing empty seats. <laughs> or yeah, so. or just the same boom cam shot that you've seen, <laughs> fucking a hundred, hundred fifty, two hundred times already today, because yep. you go to it every goddamn time. Like you could actually like that's that's the thing. I don't know. It's I don't know if that's if that's if if it's against things though. Because like, I don't. I, I don't see like the downside of it. If anything, you're creating variety, so it feels fresh. Because it's like you said, seeing the same boom shot 99 times over and over again. It's just they, they want to avoid talking heads as well, right? You know, that's the thing. It's like if you're going to come to us, then what would be ideal is you have supporting graphics to, to, to work with. Like, like for the analyst desk, right? Analyst desk very rarely gets supporting graphics because of the amount of work that actually has to go into preparing those graphics. And so like that's, that's a really tough thing for, for a tournament organizer, for example, that has to be on the road. Uh, that, that are setting up an event and that it's like event crews and all sorts of bullshit that's going on behind it. You know, do they have the guys who, who are like a graphics team who can sit down and get prepped and who, who can just bang out graphics, boom, 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 you know, to support the cast. Like uh, analysts, three points, four points, five points, or just spontaneously like, oh, they're talking about this guy, boom, bring him up, you know, that sort of yeah, stuff. Exactly. It's really, it's, it's actually more demanding. So the easier thing is this is why most of the time uh, you see that is like, oh, it's just the cat, the talking heads. It's because they don't have anything else apart from those analysts. Yeah. And I guess the same thing could be said for the commentators. It's like, do you want to throw to the commentators, but then are you just going to sit there and watch the commentators for 30 seconds, 40 seconds, a minute? I don't know. Without any kind of supporting graphic there or anything like that. I don't know. I think it's something that like, obviously it's going to have to be something that you test out, right? You have to try the waters to, to get a good idea of what's right and what's wrong and what's too much. Of something it comes down i mean i don't know it's 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 a little bit tough because I obviously think it's, me saying this it's like oh but he's biased he's I, a commentator well, but at the same time still, you like even though you're a commentator you want like that, that that's kind of the, the the mindset of everyone who's involved in a production or a, you know with an event they want to showcase the best kind of product possible so in any case like if if you come up with ideas like this it's not necessarily biased because you want more camera time it's more no. to like that like it, well this might be more engaging for the viewer than you know just staring idly at you know the same frame 
over and over again. It depends on the sport, though, Tinaza. So I see Tinaza in the chat. You know, they do that in sports. Why not in CS? Or why not in general in games? And the problem, like the the problem is, is that the like a lot of these people who are making these kinds of decisions are looking at sports as like the holy grail. And you can also say that in sports they don't do that a lot. You know, it's like the commentators are never shown on screen, or if they're shown at it's all, like pre-game. it's like pregame exactly for ten seconds. Give us your opinion. Okay, fuck off. And now we're not going to see you again for the next two hours, right? Yeah. Like you're just a voice. And so there, there's like two schools of thought, you know, going into this. Hello, Suzer. Um, is that you know, I guess well, it, sports they don't show the commentators. So well, one 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 spot where sports kind of get a free pass in terms of like how to fill time during during breaks and whatnot is that they have a sideline commentator. Mm, yeah, that too. It's what, so, it's what uh, Mitch was trying to do at Cologne. Yeah, exactly. So you kind of throw it out to you know to the sideline commentator who you know grabs the pulse of the audience or just brings up a tidbit about a player who's you know playing in the game at hand, and, and that's that's pretty much it, right? Then that's your thirty second segment, and back to you guys. You guys be like, okay, we're good to go. We're getting into the game, and on you go. Because mm-hmm. that's that's also something that hasn't really been tested too much. And, and just in games in general, I guess. But uh, especially CS, obviously, that's what we would know more about than any other game. Well, they do show casters in the NBA, that's right. I think it's it comes perhaps from, like, a desire. Well, in the NBA, they do it for pregame. Uh, like, I mean, they, they, do it, they do it pregame, you, like, especially when they have, like, uh, doubleheader games and that type of shit. So mm-hmm. if you have, like, a special TNT broadcast or something, you'll have... Uh, like Marv Albert, uh, Charles Barkley, and Chris Weber, for instance. You know, being that's going to be your trio or Reggie Miller, right. whatever. I, they're they're going to like talk like initially uh, during uh, during the game or like before the game. But when the game starts, they're never on camera. Then there's a timeout. Then they'll either throw it to a sideline reporter, and they have like a bit back and forth. Go back into the game. That's that's pretty much it. Like it's not a lot of face time for the commentators, even in the NBA. No. Like outside of pre and post game. I mean, it's tough to do the whole sideline reporter thing. Um, yeah. In a meaningful way, because you can't directly pull players over during a game and be like, "Give me your thoughts." Like, it's a little bit, a little bit yeah, more tricky. Yeah. You're getting your thoughts before or after the game, and then. I don't Especially know. because players are in the booth as well, right? So, like yeah. normally, like for a sports, you'd grab a coach. Uh, and you'd have like a like during a timeout or during halftime or whatever, you grab a coach and be like, "So, what do you guys think, yada yada, about this and this and that?" And then they'd have like an extended period of time. But in CS, it's pretty pretty rapid. Like you don't really have that extended break to the point where you can actually you know grab Zonic, for instance, and be like, "So Zonic, how do you feel like that that first half went?" Because he's you know, and they have so little amount of time. That he just wants to run off with his team, talk through shit. And get back into it, right? Or just sit in the booth and talk things over while they wait for the the second half to start. And if it's in between maps, it's kind of the same deal. They just want to talk about the next map, what they can do to prepare, what they've gone through, all mm-hmm. that stuff. So I, yeah, but I guess it's also you know infrastructure. It could be infrastructure. It's, it could also be the fact that I mean now that productions are getting deeper. As in, they have more tools and toys to play with, mm-hmm. and for the re- like the reason why commentators in the past have spent so much time on camera is because of the, some of the reasons that I talked about before: no supporting graphics, no supporting content. Literally, it was the commentators in the game. That's all the productions had to work with, and so now as productions production teams grow, they get more resources, they get more shit to play with, more cameras, all that sort of stuff. Then yeah, I mean, then yeah, that you've got more shit going on, and so but what I wonder is like, did it go like to the extreme the other way now? Because I could certainly see certain scenarios where instead of showing the same camera shot fifteen times, yes, okay, you have the cameras now, but either go to content or, or go go to, I don't know, graphs or whatever, go to go to stats, go to content, or go to commentators, and get it going yeah. that way. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I guess uh, like Ti did a pretty good job of keeping things. Engaging at least at least I felt that way when I was watching it this year and in many ways like TI is The tournament to look for like in terms of production and, and how they run things uh, Because you know you talk about like things could get stale if you just have the same talking heads for you know 25 minutes in a row no, that's just natural mm-hmm. uh, They were they were doing a really good job. It's just like having segments prepared for like let's say you know It's post game time. They're gonna talk about the game 
uh, Red Eye introduces the desk, everything, they talk for five minutes, then they have something repaired, whether it's like a weatherman segment with Purge, or if it's Casey being, you know, out in the crowd to talk to people, or they have a player, player interview that they had, or like a player profile that they want to show, all that kind of stuff. So they, they continuously had content to fill, which uh, a lot of tournaments really don't have at this point. No. Although it is like a lot of talk for Dota 2, like <laughs> when we're going into the pick ban phase or the the match breakdown. Yeah. Oof, like it's just it's a, a com lot. complex game though. Ah, yeah, yeah, you pick five heroes and you run with it, right? I mean, how how hard could it be? <laughs> I think PPD is going to get triggered by that. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I mean, we've been I realize now we've been going for like a, an hour and 40 minutes or so. So yeah, we, got, should, we got through three games. We got through three games. You know, that's that's what I'm talking about. It's good. It's good. I, I think it's good. Do you think it's good? I, I, I think we can pat ourselves on the back. You know, and I, I don't want to hold you off from like the grind either. You know, because obviously new patches out. So I didn't like it. We we don't start rating until eight. It's all good. <laughs> all right. Oh hell, shit! Until eight? Yeah. I might be able to make it then. Okay. Okay. Hey, yeah. That's something to keep in mind. Cooking, cooking with guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess quickly, before we end, we could touch on Gfinity, because that's happening this weekend. It's happening this weekend? Yeah. So there's Gfinity. So, it's happening. It's small tournament, though. Four teams. Epsilon, Envy, Godsend, Now Sports. Uh, For 100 grand. Yeah, and I that's guess... That's how much the, 100 grand gets you these days. Yeah. And uh, the funky thing about it is, uh, I think every game is the best of five. Yeah, because Gfinity are idiots and think that, you know, like best of five format is the, it's it's the holy god of CS came down to earth and bequeathed upon us the best of five format and with the, through the best of five format, my sons, you shall find the true winner of the match. And so, I mean, just best of three. At fun. least they do have the schedule, like perfected, because they're doing one game a day. Yeah, I mean it's. It's a three-day event for it's, three games. I guess that's literally the, the only thing that they can do. Okay, you do best of five because if, if, if in that sort of scenario, right, you have like, like what gets my goat is when they do best of five finals after like two best of three semis or something. Oh, and yeah. then I'm just like, stop, just, just stop. It's, it's, not not, necessary. it's not okay. It's not necessary. But I mean, I guess if, if this sounds like more of a show where it's like, okay, best of five, um, it's the only game all day. Yeah, whatever. Okay, do best of five. But yeah, I don't know. I'm a big fan of best of three. Well, G Finity's yeah, happening, and Duncan's going to be there, and I'm going to laugh at him a lot. So it's going to be good. <laughs> oh, sure. We should be entertaining. Yeah. So uh, sadly, none of these teams are going to New York, though, because I was hoping in my head, without really thinking through what teams were going, that this could be like a, a good warm up for them going into New York, but none of these teams qualified, so I guess that point's completely moot. Frozen, you have to earn respect. It's that simple. Uh, yeah, it's, you just have to earn respect. You're not going to be gifted gifted it right off the bat like that, especially if you're new. In what context? Admins. Apparently he's taken flack from players. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, basically, if you, if you want to learn how to be a, a good admin, hit up mod. Yeah, talk to mod. Mod's ruthless. But I mean, t yeah, coming back to your point, I mean, it's like, yeah, Envy, Envy bailing out of the qual qualifiers. I guess no surprise there. Um, like that, th yeah. There were a few. Uh, yeah, both Envy and Mouse Sports got knocked out. Yeah, the, Mouse Sports might be oh, the other Godsend one. as well. But then again, out. Mouse Sports, like, I don't know what the hell they're going to do now that they don't have Kassad on there. Like, that's... that's they that's got LMVT, right? Yeah. I, I know that. I don't think that was your first option. I don't think I, I'm just still like why don't you have Kassad <laughs> I, I I don't know like it feels weird as well because like no doubt Nico is the guy on mouse sports yeah and Nico and Kassad are good friends playing in teams together it's super weird to like remove probably well like one of the closest guys to Nico from the team right that, that doesn't make sense to me mm-hmm because if any, if anything, the only like outcome I see of that is like Nico getting pissed off, and you don't want your star player to, to get ticked off. Easy as that. 
not that I think it's gonna like affect his you know performance, but you know might just affect his mood around like just traveling with the team because they do travel a lot. So to have kind of like a close friend with you, who's also like actually helping your team in a good way because Sports did do better with Kassad in there. They certainly did. He took so, them like, from being complete garbage to actually, you know, getting into the semifinals of E-League. Like, pretty good. Yeah. It's a pretty good start. Pretty good, uh, you know, pretty good run there, I think. I don't know. It sounds it sounds very odd to me, though. The, that whole Kassad situation kind of comes out of comes out of the blue. Yeah. You don't go to work and say and act however you want to your bosses. Oh, I mean, are we going to have an admin discussion right now? I mean, yes, it is written in the rules that the players... I mean, this all comes down to context. Are you an online admin? Are you a tournament admin at a LAN tournament? Like, all these sorts of things come into it. Because if you're just a random online admin that the player doesn't have in their face with rules that are specifying how they need to... A code of conduct, right? That is specifying how they need to act with you. It's going to be a bit tougher than if you're standing two feet away from them saying, these are the rules shut the fuck up and sit down i mean that's uh that's yeah that's kind of how it is i don't know or it feels yeah. like that's how it should be or is uh dude we really do actually have to wrap it up i just saw the time so right. uh it's all it's already 4 p.m i gotta load this and do a bunch of stuff before i can actually go home and start to get packed and get ready shit all right yeah, dude. Yeah, when are you leaving for new york by the way what day uh i leave to atlanta tomorrow Oh shit! Yeah, you're doing illegal. And right. then um, we go to New York on the thirtieth. All right. Yeah. Well, have a safe flight. Thanks, bro. Uh, what was I gonna say? No, I was just gonna say, uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, come on to YouTube, check it out. Sub. I mean, the vods will be loaded up to YouTube. Uh, if you scroll, if you're watching on Twitch, you scroll down. You see all the buttons there. Check out the YouTube. That's where all the content is. Coffee and Semler and everything else. Um, Yanko Unchained in particular with Theorycraft. Like we've got a few things coming out. So be sure to check out the YouTube for some vods, other podcasts. Everything gets loaded there. And um, otherwise, you know, follow the channel so you know when we'll go live with the next one, which should be next week. So. Guys, have a fantastic evening, and um, I'll see you all next time. Thanks so much, Ben. No problem. Peace, bro.